All right, what are we looking at? Today's video, I'm gonna show you how to retrofit a USB input on a second generation, well, technically it's third generation, but Apple and everyone seems to call it second generation Airport Express. These have been discontinued April 2018, so this year. Relatively sadly so, but I guess they were just not selling them. A uh, very, very nice construction inside, so they have a little power supply here uh, that bolts into the main PCB, which is this one. Uh, the antennas are on these corners. I'm not sure if you're going to see it because the PCB is black, or they might actually be on the other side. Anyway, um, someone was kind enough that uh, laid out the PCB on the other side to say 3.3 volts next to these connectors and also the supply was marked uh, as outputting 3.3 uh, volts I think 2 amps or 2.2 amps or some shit like that actually let me let me check that alright so the power supply was encased in this little plastic and then had another metal shield on top of it so quite nice and this is what it says so 2.09 amps and uh, you need to have it quite steady, right? So quite a low impedance supply. Uh, I've initially connected it to a pretty discharged, pretty weak uh, lithium ion battery that was 3.3 volts and that was really not cutting it, right? So the, the LED would go out almost entirely when it was emitting, but it still worked, right? So kudos to whoever designed it. Um, but final build contains basically almost two liters of uh, epoxy resin. So I have one of these um, one of these micro USB breakouts. You can buy these for like a buck for five off of AliExpress. I have some local decoupling on this, so this is only 220 microfarads. This actually is quite needed because, um, as I've said, even with this output decoupling capacitor which is 4, 000, what was it, 4,700 microfarads, it still would draw, would, uh, would pull pulses of current that would upset some batteries, some uh, power banks, right, because this is what I want to run it off of. Uh, some of the power banks would really not fancy this trying to start up quite aggressively to charge this up, and with this it's, it's actually way more uh, compatible, let's say. And you can put up to 500 microfarads, I think, or 200, I'm not sure. Uh, the USB standard doesn't allow you to put like a huge capacitor right across the USB, right? Because you plug it into the computer, it's basically a dead short. But 220 microfarads sounds about right. I don't know, it's fine. Uh, then I'm using, so this is basically the core of the operation. And, and mainly the, the reason why I'm doing the video, because a lot of people seem to not know about these, and they're really great, so preaching the good word. Uh, so these are uh, buck converters and they are stupidly efficient. So standby, let's say if it wouldn't have this whole thing running, standby draw is 0.1 amps, uh, 0.1 milliamps, I'm sorry, 0.1 milliamps. Um, the efficiency is also very good and the power output capabilities are also very good. And if push really comes to shove, they do have short circuit protection, which some other uh, small form factor buck converters do not have. And these are also very cheap, so you can buy one for like, I don't know, a euro or some shit, a dollar, I don't know. They're very cheap, or maybe even less. Um, and pretty much, right, so you could set the output using this, um, using this potentiometer. Lately, I've tended to avoid it because of the uh, temperature drift. So I'm, I'm having some problems in a different project with temperature drift. And I'm pretty sure these aren't causing it, but I'm, I'm a bit panicked at the moment. They do have on the back pads, right, that you solder across. Let me actually bring one. So what I prefer to do recently is uh, just cut this pad here, this little trace here. You can see this one at the at the at the bottom, and then you just bridge across whatever voltage you want. In this case, it was 3.3 volts, right? 
Okay, so with that being said, uh, that is pretty much all. So 4,000 microfarads, I'm not sure if it's, if it's really required, but it sure is sufficient. I cannot see the LED blinking. Um, and apart from that, that's pretty much all, right? Mm, just maybe a little side note. I've used clear Chinese epoxy, so relatively cheap epoxy, to glue in this board here and it's basically jamming the capacitor in on this side so the board is not stuck to this so you can still service it and whatnot and on this side I've used uh, it's called poxy pole it I don't know they, they, it should have different names in different countries they I've seen it throughout Europe uh, it is ex incredibly stiff right it's quite a lot stronger than the than the clear shit and quite a lot more expensive, right? So the reason why I've used the cheap one here is you can actually heat it to about 100 degrees or maybe even less, I'm not sure, or maybe more, who knows. You can heat it up to below the melting point of solder and it becomes incredibly soft and you can rework stuff, right? Remove the stuff, clean it off. Uh, this one I've uh, yet to try to thermally uh, soften, but it's been next to situations like this and it wasn't even like feeling it at all right so uh, so with that said let's uh, quickly check out a power draw and that'll pretty much be the entire video there really isn't much to be said and I can put the back onto it be done with it oh yeah the back right so if you want to take this off take this apart um, the way you do it is um, Start off here because it's quite soft. This edge is quite soft here because of all the cutouts, right? Just basically jam it up, right? And it'll have, right, the USB ports in the back, and you'd have these clips on the side, right? This, 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 this. And right, once you get quite a few up, by breaking them usually, right, uh, you could. Pull it off and the rest will stay intact and you really don't need that many so I'm already feeling quite confident with just this one and just a couple on there it's gonna be fine so let's see maybe even zoom in a bit back down Right, so basically I think I should talk over this part because we don't have a ethernet wire over here. This is my kitchen. And um, that would really be required. Anyway, the standby power consumption is a bit larger than this. It's about 25 milliamps or so, so like 1.5 watts you can call it. 1.7, perhaps a bit more. 30 milliamps. And uh, doing a speed test, right, so basically pushing as much data through it as possible, I was getting about 550 milliamps, right, so that, that equates to less than 3 watts, right, so that's pretty fine, so you could definitely power it off a power bank, and you could definitely power it off a garden variety USB adapter, right, so that really should not be a problem, it doesn't get too hot. Uh, my final use case will be using it as a repeater for another Airport Express, but that's at a different location, so I can't test that out right now. And that should draw up technically a bit more, because for every transmission, it has to receive it and transmit it. But the receiving, right, so on the upload side of the speed test, Ah, you really wouldn't see much draw, right? So, ah, maybe the CPU would draw a bit more, but this shit is quite efficient. So, yeah, that being said, any questions, leave them down in the comments, and have a good one. And just for posterity, here is it closed. And you can see there's some marks, right? You see someone's been there, but I've done this pretty rapidly. I, if you really, really take your time, right, you just pull the two tabs, uh, f so this base has two tiny tabs over here and here you pull those up and then you go super mega carefully around the edges maybe maybe even heat up the the side plastic with a hairdryer I, I think you can get it almost perfect and plus this is gonna sit like this all the time anyway so.